Hi, my name is Natalie Armstrong Moton. Welcome to the video series Idle Chat. I have the privilege and pleasure of talking today with a friend and colleague, Liz. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hi, Natalie. I'm doing well. Thanks. Good, 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 good. So for people who have yet to meet you, can you give a real brief uh, who you are, what you do, where you are, kind of uh, an introduction? Sure. Um, well, I currently work as an organizational ombuds, and I'm here in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. So I work at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, See, so yeah, I've been doing ombuds work now for about 14 years. I am also a licensed attorney, um, farm girl at heart, grew up back in uh, New England on a horse and cattle farm. So yeah, I've done lots of different things in my life. Very nice. So the yeah. series is idle chat, but um, I have a question that maybe is not that idle or chatty. I'm not really sure. What exactly is an ombuds, ombuds woman, ombudsman, <laughs> ombuds person, um, um, ombuds booty? Well, I don't know what. You, you can use any of them. They are all, this day and age, they are pretty much all used interchangeably. Um, the official term is ombudsman. Um, it is uh, a Swedish term that was, um, has been around since the 1700s. And over time, as the profession has evolved, what we call ourselves has evolved as well. So you'll find that while many classical and public sector ombuds still use the full term ombudsman, uh, many of us in the organizational ombuds world have moved to shorten it, make it a little easier to, to say for one, um, and just use ombuds, um, which also addresses some of the gender questions that have come up and there's a whole debate out there. Some people will say the term ombudsman is in and of itself gender neutral, others disagree. So ombuds resolves that issue, um, but you'll also hear ombuds person, ombuds woman. Um, so there's quite a few variations, but um, the term is used interchangeably. However, there are different models of ombuds. So kind of have to dig a little deeper to find out what kind of ombuds are you if you, if you were to meet an ombuds. All right. I didn't know it was a Swedish word. You learn something new every day. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for that. All mm -hmm. right. Liz, are you ready for idle chat? I'm ready for idle chat. All right. So I've got a load of questions here. So we're going to shuffle the deck. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. All right. What is your least favorite household chore, Miss Ombuds? Ooh, making dinner. Because don't I just don't like it. <laughs> I'm not a big cook to begin with, but I just feel like at that time of day, uh, I'm more of a morning person, right? So I like to get up, enjoy my morning, have my coffee, my breakfast, get on with my day. By dinner time. I'm pretty much, you know, worn out. And, um, but, you know, the last thing I want to do is have to figure out what to make for dinner. Now, I know people will say, well, you could plan ahead and you could do menu planning. And I've tried that, but it's just my least favorite thing to worry about or think about. That's fair. But you, you, you have somebody else in your house that is okay with dinner. Well, um, that's a relative term. Okay, it depends on how you define okay with making dinner. <laughs> so my husband will um, step up and, and make dinner. And I do participate. I do help. Um, it's just not, it's just my least favorite thing to do. Just not your thing. That's fair. Yeah. That is fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, next learning question. Have you ever cut your own hair? Gosh, that's a great question. I'm trying to think back to my younger years. I think if I maybe did it but I wasn't supposed to. I don't know that I ever did. I don't think so. Definitely not as an adult. Good for you for resisting. <laughs> and I'm getting my hair done tomorrow. So I was like, I was just saying, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Uh, what is your favorite spectator sport, please? Mm, oh, wow. I like lots of spectator sports. I would say basketball. I really enjoy watching basketball because it's fast paced. There's always fun entertainment, usually good music in the background, lots of energy from the audience. Usually at halftime, I like to watch the, the whatever the performance is at halftime. Um, and if you're there live, of course, you know, they usually will throw things, you know, into the audience. So it's always fun to try to catch <laughs> a 
<laughs> whatever they're whatever they're throwing. <laughs> I participate. I have to admit, I yeah. liked basketball better in the seventies and early eighties when the shorts were shorter. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The uniforms have changed quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the the old Larry Bird. You know, Carl the Mailman Malone. Yeah, it's true. I never thought about that. That's right. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking back, yeah, you're right. It was, it was um. <laughs> pleasing. All right. <laughs> Miss Liz, what is your favorite um, app on your phone? What's your go-to app? What's oh the my gosh. Can I look? Can I cheat? App? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a social media addict, right? So LinkedIn is one of my, you know, first go-tos. Um, but other than that, I'm just looking. I mean, usually I'm plan always trying to plan my next trip. So, you know, Southwest and Airbnb are probably right up there with LinkedIn. <laughs> I would not have guessed that. All right. Mm -hmm. Southwest and Airbnb. You haven't been able to use them a whole lot during COVID, but you'll get, you'll get uh, good use out of them. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 I continue using them. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're just a dreamer, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Um, and I guess related to that, how many hours do you think you spend each day uh, online? Oh my gosh. So when you say online, are we talking like screen time, like, like, um, like doing Zoom calls and doing yeah. computer work as yeah. well as phone? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is going to be embarrassing to admit this, but it's a lot. I mean, it's probably more than half my day. Half as in 12 hours? Yeah. I, don't, I wonder what the national average is for America. I don't know. I mean, I know the phone will tell you how many hours you've used it, right? But then when I think about that and I think about my work day, I mean, because I pretty much sit here on my computer doing, especially during COVID, right, doing video calls. I'm pretty much on my laptop from six in the morning until dinner. And then I usually will then play on my phone after dinner. So that's a big chunk. That's a lot of time. Big I'm chunk. sorry, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed. I'm actually ashamed of myself. I'm gonna say you're more <laughs> than you think you are. <laughs> Your next question. Okay. Move away from the embarrassing subjects. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you had more than nine hours of sleep? Oh, actually, I track my sleep, so this really shouldn't be hard for me to um, to guess. But I would say I think the last time I saw um, my tracker tell me it was more than nine was last week. I was on a family vacation up in. So I go to bed early. I get up early, but I go to bed early. And so last week we were uh, on a family vacation. And so I went to bed normal time, but slept in. So I think I ended up getting like ten and a half hours of sleep. That feels good. <laughs> It that did feel good. It was nice. Really <laughs> good. Um, all right. Uh, changing topics just a little bit. What outdoor activity would you like to try that you have never previously tried? Mm, that I've never previously tried. Snowshoeing. That's a good one. Mm. That's a good one. And I can't even explain why I haven't. Like I, I, you know, I live here in the mountains, and I, I love out. You know, I love downhill skiing. I love hiking. It just seems like it's kind of a combination. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's like a combination that you like. You're out walking around hiking, but you have devices on your on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I should. I think I need to try it. Yeah. That's I think that should, Yeah, that needs to be on your your next app is uh, searching for a Southwest <laughs> flight to a snowy environs so that you can learn how to snowshoe. I like it. When, um, <laughs> let's see, do you ever eat food that is past ex its expiration date, but when mm. you look at it and you smell it, it seems to be just fine. Do you, do you push those, those FDA encouraged limits ever? No, actually, it's really, that's really a funny that, that you're asking me this question, because I was just having this conversation with my husband literally less than a day ago, because he does do what you just described, like he'll, he might look if he thinks of it, but as long as it smells and looks okay, he'll just eat whatever's in the fridge, and I'm constantly going through, you know, judging everything, <laughs> right, like taking everything out, like what's the date, and if it's fast, I just like start chucking things, um, 
the other thing that I don't know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this now. Like the other thing that is questionable is, you know, expiration dates may be a week away. But if that food has been opened, in my mind, that expiration date is no longer valid. Like within a few days of that being open, like it needs to be eaten or thrown away. So I don't know. I'm kind of a stickler on that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't push the GI envelope. Right. I think mm -mm. that um, you'd have to look about, you'd have to look up the rules and regulations for your <laughs> country because some of those foods have a best if used by date, not necessarily yes. an expiration date, uh, best if sold by date, not necessarily a best, you know, a, a, an expiration date. And so I leave it up to my better judgment on, on almost all of those things. Um, so I, I do, I look at it and I smell it and I look at the dates and then, um, you know, I, I, I do, I just use my better judgment because some of those dates are, are, are put there <laughs> by the manufacturer to encourage more frequent purchasing, not necessarily. And I get that. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily because the, the food item is, is, you know, on its way out. Sure, sure. No, I think that's valid. And um, you're probably right. They're probably very conservative in their dates. But yeah, no, if I see that date, even if it's a best sell by or a best used by date, if it's passed, I'm usually like, right. Now, I, I oh. do admit if it's something that <laughs> has been in a picnic basket in the trunk of the car all the <laughs> way back from the beach, when we get home, it's gone. It's it's finished. It, it has seen better days. We're, we're done. I think that's smart. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, this is a really good question. Now, okay. Let's get into the serious stuff. Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie or not? Oh, my gosh. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. I'm going to go with no. <gasps> Fair enough, but why? I mean, it has Christmas in the movie. I know, I know. And I, I and I haven't, saw, and so admittedly, I haven't seen Die Hard in a long time. But I do recall, I do recall that, that it's based around, around Christmas. Um, but when I think, I, I think it's just more of a perception. Like when I think of Die Hard, I think of the movie genre, if you will, I don't think Christmas movie. I yeah. think, when I think of Hallmark, I think Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, like the Hallmark movies or whatever they're called, the Lifetime. <laughs> it's film. Film is an art, and art is open to your own perception and your own opinion. So, uh, you know, I, not a Christmas movie. That's that's how it is. It's just not a Christmas movie for you. But you know what? If I watched it again, and, you know, I might feel differently. You'll probably talk me into it. You'll probably talk me into it. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm not really committed to this answer. <laughs> you're, you're in now. All right. All right. <laughs> Um, next question, um, what is your favorite city? Wow, that is really hard. Do you have more than one favorite city? I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I like so many places that I've, that I've traveled to or visited. Um, I don't know that I have like a, oh my gosh, that's my favorite. How I don't know that I've ever, ever really thought about it. How about this? How about what is your favorite city in the winter? Probably Steamboat Springs. Good answer. Because I love to go skiing there in the winter. Good answer. Good answer. All right. I like that one. Uh, okay. Next. Thanks for narrowing it. <laughs> well, do what I can. <laughs> uh, what is your, or rather, who is your favorite cartoon or comic book character? So I have an answer coming to mind, but I feel like it needs an explanation. So I'm going to go with Donald Duck. And I know that probably sounds super random, and it is. And the reason I say that is because my nine-year-old son is obsessed with Donald Duck. And we got him one of those like Donald Duck, like hand puppet things. And he, with YouTube videos, has mastered how to talk like Donald Duck. And it's adorable. It's adorable. He goes around with his puppet and does Donald Duck. 
That is pretty. It's really cute. That is pretty doggone. Oh my gosh. That's pretty cute. All right. Uh, Next to the last question, what, Mm -hmm. excuse me, next to the last question, what do you like most about yourself? I like my resilience. I feel like um, I have a positive stance on on most things in life and that I believe, and I don't know, I'm not a a psychiatrist, but I think that really helps me um, maintain an even keel regardless of whether things are going really well or whether things are really not going so well. I can um, maintain some equilibrium regardless and carry on. And my attitude is, you know, kind of, it's, it's a cliche, but you know, this will pass. It's kind of, you know, just, just do what you got to do to get through it and move on. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things I like most about you is that every time we talk to each other, um, I'm always happy when we finish with the phone call. I always feel better for having chatted to you than, than not. Well, that's, that's wonderful. That's my- thank you for sharing that. Oh, I'll, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And we're almost out of time, but one last question. What do you love most about being an alms buddy? An alm buddy? Oh, gosh, there's so many things I love about it. Um, I love that every day is different. So, you know, I never know what's going to end up you know, on my plate that day, as far as, for instance, that we call them visitors, people who come to us for consultations or to, for help. And we may end up, our services vary. We may end up doing coaching. We may end up doing mediation. We may end up intervening in some way, whatever the case may be, we do lots of different things. But I don't know um, until I actually get on the Zoom call or in the meeting room or on the phone, whatever the format is, what that person, who that person is, uh, what their concerns are, what they want to talk about, what their goals are, what they want out of any given situation. So every conversation is unique and very different. Uh, and of course, and the result of, you know, next steps varies and is always very different. So I really enjoy that, that part of it. I can see how that would be appealing and perfect for your personality. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, well, Elizabeth, Thank you for uh, spending a little time in idle chat with me. I appreciate it. Wish you nothing but the best. And I'll talk to you you soon. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Bye.